my baseball book. The title of a text identifies the topic or what I will learn about in the text. So I will learn about baseball from this book by Gail Gibbons. The first thing I do when I read a book is figure out what genre I'm reading. Well, the first thing I notice is I see a baseball here and I see illustrations of baseball players. Now I'm going to read the first sentence to figure out if this is a fiction or a nonfiction text. Baseball is fun, whether you are playing yourself or rooting for your favorite team. Well, this is giving me a fact in my first sentence, so I'm going to conclude that this is a nonfiction text. Remember, nonfiction means not fake. I go over to my cake and I circle the N for nonfiction. And now I need to think about my author's purpose, to persuade, inform, or entertain. I know that the author's purpose in a nonfiction text is to inform the reader. Now, good readers identify the topic that they're being informed of when they read a nonfiction informational text. The topic of this text is baseball. So next to my T, I need to write the word baseball. A new word to know is expository. Expository texts give information about real life topics, a real life topic like baseball. Baseball is fun, whether you are playing for yourself or rooting for your favorite team. To play, you need a ball, a bat, and gloves, and sometimes a uniform. Notice this illustration with labels on it. This is called a diagram. A diagram explains information or how something works in a visual way. It's usually an illustration or a photograph that has labels on it. Good readers pay attention to diagrams. They stop and they read them before moving on. So I'm noticing that these children are on a baseball field. They're each in different colored uniforms. Now I need to read the actual labels. Baseball cap, okay, she has that on her head. Baseball glove, also called a mitt. Oh, that's a synonym. Baseball glove is a synonym for mitt. Baseball, okay. Batting helmet, bat. Baseball shoes, the spikes called cleats. Protective gear for the catcher and umpire. Oh, okay, so this diagram is teaching me about what people who are playing baseball wear, what their uniforms look like, and what materials they might need for playing the game. Wow, I learned all of that just by reading and looking at the diagram. Good readers pay attention to text features. A baseball field is sometimes called a diamond. There's another synonym. Baseball field is diamond. And now I'm noticing I have another diagram. Remember, a diagram explains information or how something works in a visual way, meaning I have an illustration here with labels on it showing me what a baseball field or diamond looks like. So I take the time and I look at it. I take it in. I learn from it. So up here is home plate, little white little triangle there getting pointed to. The batter's box. Another batter's box. Foul ball territory over here. I go this way. I get to first base. So here is second base. Third base. In the middle is the pitcher's mound. This label says infield, so all this green space is the infield. And out here is the outfield. So outside here and all of this green space is the outfield. Wow, look at all I can learn by just looking at the diagrams of a text. There are usually nine players on a team. These players try to score the most runs for their team. To score, a player must advance to first base, second base, and third base, then back to home plate. That's a run. So I see two illustrations up here. As a good reader, I need to ask myself, what is the author trying to show me with these illustrations? Well, I see a group of kids up here all wearing red, and they have little birds on their shirts. 
and I see another group of kids down here all wearing yellow, and they have like another kind of bird on their shirt. Now I need to read the label, the robins, the owls. The author is showing me the two different teams in the game. A baseball game usually lasts for nine innings. Games for younger players are often shorter. Each inning has a top half and a bottom half. The visiting team bats first at the top of the inning. Remember, I pay attention to all my text features. So I see the home team here, and they're shaking hands with the visiting team. And I read every label. Each team gets three outs in its half of an inning. Interesting. Coaches teach the players. They also choose the batting order and decide which player will play which position. Okay, so this older person here who's taller than everybody else must be the coach who teaches the players. Okay, that makes sense. Oop, I see some more diagrams. The home team takes the field, and the umpire yells, play ball. I'm going to stop before I move on to my next page and learn from the diagram. I see that the catcher is over here. Okay, that's this guy in the yellow. The umpire is in charge of the game. Okay, that's the guy back here, so he's in charge. And I see a person in red. He's batting. First baseman. You see how he's next to the first base? Second baseman. Shortstop. Hmm, what's a shortstop do? Oh, it tells me right here. The shortstop guards between second and third base. We have a third baseman, a pitcher, and I have th three more guys out back here. Right fielder, center fielder, and left fielder. Wow, it's amazing everything we can learn just by looking at a diagram. The first batter steps to the plate. The pitcher winds up and throws the ball toward the catcher. She wants to get the batter out. One way is to strike him out. It's a strike if the batter swings and misses. I need to read this label up here on this diagram. It is also a strike if the batter doesn't swing, but the ball passes through the strike zone. Oh, I'm guessing these little dotted lines right here, those show me where the strike zone is. Interesting. On the first pitch, the batter swings and misses. On the second pitch, the batter hits the ball into foul territory. Strike one. Strike two. Three strikes and the batter will be out, but he hits the third pitch toward the shortstop and runs for first base. The shortstop catches the ball and throws it to first. If the first baseman has her foot on the bag and the catches the ball before the runner gets there, the runner is out. So they're showing all of that happening up here. It's a close play, but the runner makes it to first base before the ball gets there. He's safe. The pitcher throws four balls out of the strike zone to the next batter. The batter goes to first base and the runner on first advances to second base. Then the third batter gets a hit. Noticing what it says up here. If the pitcher throws four balls out of the strike zone, that's a walk. Hmm, interesting fact that I wouldn't have known if I didn't read up here. Now there are runners on all three bases. The bases are loaded. So when all three bases are have people on them, that means they're loaded. The fourth batter swings and it's another hit. The runner on third races to touch home plate. The visiting team scores a run. The next batter hits a fly ball that is caught in the outfield. That means the batter is out. When three batters are out, it's the other team's turn to hit. The visiting team takes the field, and the home team steps up to bat. It's the bottom of the first inning. The visiting team leads 1-0. to zero. Five innings are played. 1, 2, 3, 4. By the sixth inning, the visiting team is ahead by three runs. And I can see that up here by looking at my scoreboard, visitors, home. This is a six-inning game. It's the bottom of the sixth. 
the home team's last turn at bat. There are two outs, and the bases are loaded. The fans hold their breath. The pitcher winds up and throws. The batter swings, and it's a home run. One, two, three, four runners cross home plate. The home team wins. Everyone cheers. It's been such a good game. The final score is 9-8. to eight. Now that's the end of the text. But back here we have what they labeled My Baseball Glossary. Remember, a glossary tells the definitions of some of the words found in a text. You can read these words on your own to learn what each of them means. 